Hallelujah. Good morning. We want to thank God for another exciting time in God's presence. Hallelujah to our God forevermore. Glory be to God forever. We give God praise. We give him praise for his faithfulness. What a mighty God we serve. We serve a mighty God. Him alone is worthy of our praise. This morning we'll continue on our series, The Manifestation of the Sons of God. The Manifestation of the Sons of God. The revelation of our sonship is very critical in our relationship with God and in our relationship with the world. We need to establish that we are sons of God and that is who God has made us. Whether you are a female, whether you are a male, in the kingdom of God, in the realm of the spirit, there are no gender differences. God has called each and every one of us as sons of the kingdom. And we've been looking at it for the past couple of weeks. And today, by the grace of God, we will continue until the Lord gives us an exhaustion on this revelation. Romans chapter 8, verse 14, we start from our scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 says, For as many, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then hears, hears of God and join hears with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we might also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the sin in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Hallelujah. Today we'll continue on the manifestation of sonship. We have established in our previous teachings that God has made us sons. First John chapter 3, from verse 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Verse 2 says, now we are the sons of God. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, for as many that received him, for as many that received Christ, have been given the power, the authority, to be called the sons of God, for as many that have believed on his name. So we are sons of God, and there are consequences. Maybe I should say, implications, maybe I should say benefits of our sonship. We need to understand that sonship is not just a nomenclature. Sonship comes with its benefit. Sonship comes with its implications. Sonship comes with its consequences. And we established before now, number one, that because we are sons, we are heirs of God. We are heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. And last week we established that a heir is someone who is legally entitled to inherit, to inherit the property or rank of another person upon that person's death. And we know that the Bible says that a will will not come into effect until the testator dies. And this was established in Hebrews chapter nine. And we know that our testator, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross of Calvary 
so that his will can come into effect in our lives. So we have become legal, legally entitled to inherit all that God has in Christ. Hallelujah. We looked at the books of Luke chapter 15, where the father of the prodigal son told the elder brother that you have always been with me. All that I have is yours. You are my heir. You are legally entitled to, to all that I have. We established, therefore, that because we are sons of God, we are heirs of God. We are legally entitled. We have been given the right to enjoy all that God has for us. And Psalm 103 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, and forget not all his benefit. Forget not. As sons of God, we have the benefit of sonship in God. Hallelujah. Today, we're going to be talking about the liberty of the sons of God, the liberty of the sons of God. If you look at your Bible where we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 21, the Bible says, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. I want to establish again this morning that as sons and children of God, we have the liberty, the glorious liberty of sonship. Hallelujah. We have the glorious liberty, the freedom from everything that kept us in bondage. As sons, we are free. Glory to God. I love this. If you look at verse 15 of Romans chapter 8, our test scripture, the Bible says, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit of bondage has to relate to slaves, with servants, bond slave and servants. But because we are now sons of God, we have come into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Hallelujah. I want you to know that as a son of God, you are free from the elements of this world. You are free from the power of Satan. You are free from the power of sin. You are free from everything that the devil holds in control. Glory to God. That is who you are. I want you to know, let's look at Galatians chapter 5, Galatians 4, before we go to 5, and we continue to establish. We cannot stop talking about our glorious liberty. We can't stop talking about the fact that we are free. Scripture says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth of the matter is as sons of God, we have entered into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 4. Let me read from verse 6 to verse 7. Glory to God. And the Bible says, and because you are sons, are you hearing the premise upon which we are now free? The Bible says, and because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Verse 7, wherefore you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then I hear of God through Christ. Did you hear that? Now, the, 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 the bondage has to do with slaves, with servants. The Bible says we are no longer a servant. You are no more a servant. You are now a son of God. You have crossed from bondage to liberty. You have crossed from any form of things that hold people bound to deliverance. Glory to God. We have moved from being bound by culture, by tradition. We have been delivered from sinful bondage to the glorious liberty of the sons of God. You are no more a servant. You are not under a 
any bondage. You are not under any chains. You are not under any shackles of the enemy anymore because you are now a son of God. May that done in our spirit, man. You are born free. Glory to God. You are born free. In, in, in chapter 5, verse 1 of Galatians, the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast. That's what the Bible says. It is freedom that we have in Christ. We will no longer be under the servitude or the slavery of this world, of sin, of Satan. We stand fast in our liberty. We know who we are. And this is the truth that the devil doesn't want people to know. The devil wants to keep every believer in total ignorance of their sonship. Today, may the Lord deliver us that we have an understanding of our sonship. I am a son of God. Therefore, I cannot be bound. Glory to God. You have entered into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Let me tell you a story. In Genesis chapter 21, the Bible says concerning Haggai and Sarah, there was a confrontation. In Genesis chapter 21, let me read for you. Genesis 21. We're going to look at the experience of Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael and Isaac. Genesis 21 verse 10. The Bible says, All right, look at what the Bible says. In, 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 in the, um, let me read from verse 9. The Bible says, And Sarah, the free wife, the, 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 the wife of Abraham, saw the son of Haggai, the Egyptian. Haggai was a maid servant, an Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking the slave, the, the the, the son of the bound woman mocking Isaac, the son of the free woman. And that's what happens. But listen, Sarah had to take a decisive step. How can the son of a bound woman mock the son of a free woman? How can a servant child mock the son of child? And that's what happens. Look at what the Bible says in verse 10. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bound woman and her son. For the son of this bound woman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac. Sarah took a decisive step and confronted the situation headlong. It is an aberration for the son of the bound woman to compete with the son of a free woman is an aberration for a servant to inherit to co-inherit the inheritance of a son no so Sarah said cast off cast out do away with this bound woman and her son because as long as Ishmael belonged to the bound woman. She had no right. She rem he remained a slave just like the mother. Verse 11, the Bible says, and this thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Look at what the Bible says. God supported Sarah. In verse 12, and God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in your sight because of the lad. And because of thy bound woman, in all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall your seed be called. Glory to God. Now I want you to know that Ishmael and Isaac represented two kinds of people. Ishmael represented unbelievers, children of the bound woman. Isaac represents the believers. 
who are the born free children, sons and daughters of God. And the Bible tells us here that Sarah said, cast her, send that bond woman out with her son because she has no liberty in this house. I want you to know that this is what God has done for us in Christ. The bond woman has been sent out. We have free sons and daughters of God in the New Testament, hallelujah. I want you to know that you are free. There are three categories of freedom. And I want us to understand today, hallelujah, never again will you be held by any form of habits, any form of traditions, because I want us to exercise the rights of our glorious liberty in Christ, hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter number six. This is important. Romans chapter 6, the greatest deliverance we have, the greatest freedom we have is freedom from sin. I want you to hear this child of God. The greatest freedom that we have is not even freedom from sin. It's freedom from sin. Glory to God. The greatest deliverance, the greatest freedom we have is not freedom from from. One, one, one enemy here or there. The greatest deliverance we have, the greatest liberty we have is liberty from sin. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, I wish we can read a whole chapter, but because of our time, we're going to just speak some scriptures, some verses from this chapter. The Romans chapter 6, I read from verse 1. So what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Look at verse 12. He said, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the laws thereof. Look at verse 14. He said, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. For sin shall not have dominion over you. I want you to know, child of God, that you are free. Look at verse 18. It says, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Being made free from sin, glory to God, we have been made free from sin, from everything that displeases God. We are no longer servants of sin to please the laws thereof. We are now servants of righteousness because we are now sons of God. Glory to God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, I'm establishing the Father as sons who understand the glorious liberty into which we have been called, we are free from the hold of sin. I've heard people say, I can't control myself. Once this comes, I just have to do it. No more shall you be helpless in the face of sin and temptation because you have received the glorious liberty of the Son of God. Liberty from sin and the hold of sin. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you are free from sin. You are free from sinful habit. You are free from the things that are wrong in your family. In the name of Jesus, you are no longer servants of sin. You are servants of righteousness because that is who you are. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, where is therefore, there is therefore, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, one of my most favorite scriptures. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Look at what the Bible says in verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. There are two laws that are operational in life. 
the law of sin and death, and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. These two laws operate in two different sets of people. In the people in the world, the law of sin and death is operational. But as we cross over to Christ, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus takes over. And two laws, listen, you come in a country and you're under two laws. I'm in Namibia right now. I am governed by the law of Namibia, not by the law of Nigeria, not by the law of United States of America. I am under the control of the law of the sovereign nation of Namibia. Hallelujah. When I cross over the border to another country, I am subjected to the laws of that country. What may be permissible in Namibia or in Nigeria may not be permissible elsewhere. What is obtainable in Kigali, Rwanda may not be obtainable, obtainable in Lagos, Nigeria. We need to understand this. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is what is operational upon our lives as sons and daughters of God. And this law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. You are no longer under the influence of the law of sin and death. You are now under the influence of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. What a glorious liberty that we have. That no matter the temptations that come, you look at sin and say, sin, I have control over you. I have control over my appetite. I have control over my sexual feelings. I have control over alcohol. I have control over anger. I have control over corruption. I have control over anything that the devil may bring my way. You are no longer powerless. Glory to God. That's the greatest liberty that we have. Greatest liberty of the sons of God. I'll share scripture to you, with you as we close. Titus chapter number two, Titus. Glory to God, Titus chapter two. The Bible says, yeah, Titus, yeah, chapter two. I read from verse 11 and verse 12. The Bible says in Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. It says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, you and I. What does this grace do? I want you to know that grace is an empowerment. Grace empowers us. Grace is not a license to sin. Let me repeat this. Grace, I've heard a lot of people, you know, preach grace. I say, no matter what they do, grace covers them. No, that is not the gospel of Jesus. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is empowerment to say no to sin. What you could do, say no to. Grace comes and empowers you. Glory to God. Grace comes and you empower. You know that, ah, normally, I would have fallen for this temptation. Normally, I would have given in for this temptation. But the grace of God, hallelujah, the grace of God. Look at what the Bible says. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness. Some scripture says to say no to ungodliness, to say no to worldly loss. The grace of God teaches us to live so badly, righteously, and godly in this present world. People will ask you, why is it that you are not affected by the sinful temptation that goes on? I need to know that child of God, there are temptation right, left, and center everywhere. But what makes you different is because you have entered into the glorious liberty of the Son of God, where the grace of God empowers you 
You see sin, the pool of sin has lost its hold over your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm a, I'm a testimony of what grace can do in the areas of overcoming temptations and sin. I need you to know that the greatest liberty we have is not deliverance from some witches and wizards. I need you to know that witches and wizards are the, in the lowest rank of principalities and powers. You know, listen, a man who gains control, who has been empowered by grace to live above sin, does not fear witches and wizards. Jesus said, the prince of the world comes and has no part in me. There's an anointing that follows living righteously. And we have the grace of God that has empowered us to live righteously. Glory to God. I'll close here this morning by reading Galatians chapter 3. We can't talk about liberty. We can't talk about freedom if we don't include Galatians chapter 3. Oh, what a glorious thing the Lord Jesus has done for us. I'm free. I want to hear you say I'm free. I am free from sin. I'm free from Satan. I'm free from the law. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Christ has redeemed you and I from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us where it is written. Cause is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. We have been redeemed from the cause of the law. The law says anybody that lives by the law, anybody that obeys the law shall live by the law. But we know that we didn't have power to live by the law. So we have been redeemed from the cause, from failing to live by the law. We are redeemed, child of God. One of our manifestations as sons of God is to live in liberty, in freedom, from sin, from the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We are free from living under the control of habits of sinful habit, giving in to every temptation. No, you are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are free. Glory to God. Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you for the glorious liberty we have in Christ. Thank you for the glorious liberty. Bible says, if the Son of Man shall set you free, you are free indeed. We are free in the name of Jesus. Child of God, I pray for you today that you will experience the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Never again will you be brought under the bondage of sin. In Jesus' precious name we'll pray. Amen. Glory to God forevermore. Glory to God forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will thank